my chart for a little bit, so it's a little bit flatter. This is what we're working with today. We're going to be doing um, a charcoal drawing of transparent objects. And the goal of this is we're going to start with a background that's totally gray and then use the needed eraser and compressed charcoal to add our values in. Okay. So I'll show you how to start. Again, you can follow along if you want. And then uh, feel free to ask questions if you want. So the vine charcoal, you want to coat the whole entire surface. I've just taken a piece of it and broken it off into a smaller piece. And then I'm just going to fill this whole thing with a lot of value. Go ahead and leave a border. You don't have to go all the way to the edge. I like to give myself like an inch border all the way around. That way I don't have to worry about blending tone right to that edge of the surface. But I'm just going to fill this all in pretty thick. And then I'm going to take my hand and just start to use circular motion to blend in the surface nice and sm smooth and flat. Okay, so now we have something that is like a middle gray tone, right? And our goal now is to try to, uh, to draw the still life. I wanna see if I can, let's see if I can get the viewer, the camera a little closer to what we're working with here. So we've got the glass objects, some light objects, some dark objects. We're gonna to try to work with that in between. I'm gonna start with that vase and build it up from there. The great thing about working with a ground like this is that you can just draw right on top of it with the vine charcoal, okay? So this is gonna be the step. We're just gonna to try to sketch out the still life. So for you guys, here in class, I would try to render at least like three objects. Okay. If you best if you can include the dark blue object and the clear object. So you get that kind of combination. And we're gonna say that the the black, well, it looks awful gray in here, doesn't it? But the black tabletop is gonna be the same tone as this. Okay. So anything that you see that's gonna be lighter than that is gonna be erased out. Anything darker is gonna be added in. Okay. So it's kind of a reductive method. So when we start drawing, I'm just gonna start with this vase over here on the left, and I'm just gonna map it out with the vine charcoal. I'm gonna get the access down the middle. I'm gonna to try to get the angles. Remember, when you're doing symmetrical objects, try to give yourself some structure to work off of before you do the curves. Something like this. Seems to be pretty good. Now the great thing about working with the vine charcoal like this is if you make a little mistake, you just blend it back into the surface, right? So you don't need to use your eraser at this point. You're just going through and trying to map out the composition, the contour line, try to get it nice and symmetrical as we go. So you'll notice that the vine charcoal, I'm pressing down fairly hard, and this is about as dark as it's gonna get. It's not gonna to get totally black. It's kind of a darker middle gray. And so we really need to think about that value range as we go into this overall kind of composition. So I think, I think I'm getting close with this overall structure of the vase. And now what I'm gonna do is kind of clean it up a bit and then go into the value. All right, so I'm just gonna blend this back into the surface. I don't need those lines anymore. Just blend that in. Blend in some of these lines a little bit. This one back here. So I just am left with that nice structure of the vase. So 
So now, when I look at this thing, I need to assess where the light is coming from. So the kneaded eraser, if it gets all dirty, you just sort of knead it like dough to get it nice and clean again. All right, and I'm gonna start with this. From my perspective, I see that there's a highlight pretty much along this edge, definitely light in the middle of this part. Uh, in, the, in the middle of here, it's a little bit darker and I can see the light hitting the cascading on some of the areas of the edges. So to begin, I'm just gonna start by kind of defining that highlight that's hitting the edges of the outside of the vase. So I'm gonna kind of erase it away pretty hard like this. And then I can go back and blend it a little bit, soften that hard mark. And what I'm noticing here is that I'm gonna get rid of this line because this line does not exist as dark, but rather I see it as the lightness kind of meeting the background. So I'm gonna blend it in a little bit here. And I'm gonna use my eraser to get that edge to come out. I've also taken, you can hardly see this, but this is a white eraser that I have cut into a little tiny piece, or you can see it there. And this can also be a good tool to draw with because you can get that edge to be really nice and sharp. So here you can see I'm getting, instead of that dark outline of the vase, what I'm getting is the lightness meeting the darkness of the background. And it's a bit more the way that I see the composition on this edge, okay? And again, I'm gonna soften it a little bit, kind of blend it together. The foreground and the background, okay? Now, I also see some really bright highlights, so I'm gonna scrub those in with this too. I've got the highlights of the, the lights coming in, so I can add some of these. I see it here and here, I see it here. I definitely have a lot of lightness down at the bottom of the vase. So I'm gonna scrub that out. So you're just looking for the major areas of light and dark to begin with, and kind of building up those tones as you go. Uh, it's definitely lighter through here a little bit. And some of it down here as well. So this is more like painting, I would say, than drawing in a sense when you're using the eraser. It's almost like you're, you're creating that softer tone that you can build in the form with. And then the edges are important to define as well, both of the background and the foreground. Okay, so I've gotten some good highlights in here. It's a little bit more here, a little bit more in there. And then I wanna get some of the darker areas in. Now when I'm looking through the vase, I can see the cup in the background. I can see the background, which is a little bit darker than this tone. So I'm just gonna start by adding in a little bit of this compressed charcoal. So this is two ways to add the compress. One is this stick of charcoal like this, and the other one is this pencil. They both have compressed charcoal. I uh, have different ways of making the marks. I'm gonna start with this and just add in a little bit of that darkness that I see up through here, a little bit in through here, and then I notice some down in through here as well. I'm not pressing down very hard with this one, but what I'm noticing are the tones that are a little bit darker than that middle gray. And so then I'm just gonna to start to blend these in as well. So you'll notice that the way to get your highlights to look lighter is sometimes by making your shadows or darker areas look darker. Some of those details. So when you're working into the details then what you're going to want to do is you can use the, the charcoal pencil. So for example to 
to get the little edge that I see along here, I can use this as a, as a line, to sort of blend this in to get that to be nice and sharp against that other tone. And I can use my finger to sort of blend it a little bit sharper. Uh, this area here definitely has a light kind of a background meeting the darker one. So I'll use my kneaded eraser to get that to come out. So sometimes you have to work back and forth. You know, I can shape up that, that line by going in with the charcoal pencil to make that more sharp, kind of darken that in. So it's a process of adding and subtracting and adding and subtracting kind of as you go through. So the other thing to consider once you get a little bit farther along is um, shadows on the ground, right? So if we're calling the surface of that black tone for kind of the middle gray tone, all the shadows hitting the surface of the ground should be the compressed circle. So I'm gonna kind of go in now and bring in some of those cylindrical circles to get some of the darkness of those shadows to come through and then blend those in accordingly as well. And that's gonna really help give a sense of the, part of what we wanna do with this is not only show the reflections on the object, but also the environment with the, that this is existing in. So we have multiple light sources. We see these concentric circles of shadows. Shadows aren't totally dense. Some of them have highlights in the middle of them as well. And that's going to help give a quality of light for the whole 